As the amount of time will be in the thick of things protracts, people have concerns. Some are more valid than others, though. Food security, flattening the curve, and the availability of testing, these are all very important and should be front of mind. Toilet paper hordes, starting your side hustle, and keeping your abs popping, less immediately crucial. But what about concerns about the virus itself? One question I've seen all over the place is what we'll be discussing today. What if the coronavirus mutates? It's a sensible question that deserves some scrutiny. So today, we here at Life's Biggest Questions will be addressing it head on to the best of our ability. Unfortunately, nobody in-house is a virus expert, but I will do my best to present only the facts and try not to speculate too much on things I'm not an authority on. Instead, this video will discuss how virus mutations work and what leading experts have to say about potential mutations during the current pandemic. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more of the latest. Perfect, let's begin. The first thing we should address is the fact that all viruses mutate. It's natural selection on a microscopic level, survival of the fittest among the viruses. The thing is, viruses aren't technically living. They need a host organism in order to produce. Thanks to this, they are subject to certain evolutionary pressures. The human immune system fights pathogens off in different ways, which makes for an environment where said pathogens have to avoid the immune system in order to create copies of themselves and spread to other hosts. Characteristics that make this work tend to be kept over generations of the virus, and stuff that makes it more difficult to survive the human immune system and spread host to host is usually lost. Often, mutations that help kite antibodies are the ones that are the most successful. Hosts will develop antibodies, which then lock onto the outer surface proteins of a virus and prevent them from entering cells. However, if a virus appears different from other viruses, it may have the advantage of not encountering a pre-existing immunity. We'll get to how this happens in just a second. Before we do that, I want to mention that the most extremely deadly mutations aren't often very prolific. If a virus is too deadly and kills or incapacitates somebody within a short period of time, it's unlikely that it'll be able to spread to a new host in time for its descendants to survive. If the host dies before it can infect others, that mutation will disappear. Poor mutation just went too hard for its own good. So how do virus mutations work exactly? Well, there are two main types of viruses, RNA and DNA. RNA is more common among prevalent viruses like influenza and HIV. DNA is more stable as the molecule has a proofreading check as part of its reproductive process. It will use the host cell to verify viral DNA replication and therefore does not mutate much. RNA, on the other hand, is unstable. There's no built-in proofreading step, meaning that mistakes in copying RNA happen often and the host cell does not correct these mistakes. These mutations can have all sorts of consequences. Some have no effect at all, which are known as neutral mutations. Others do have an effect, often making the newly generated virus more transmissible. But for a mutation in a single particle to affect the general virus population, it needs to be passed on. It must also improve the virus's ability to survive and replicate, a trait described as selectively advantageous. Dangerous traits like infectiousness and ability to cause disease are controlled by multiple genes and the possibility of changing all these traits would require multiple random selectively advantageous mutations all occurring at the same time. We'll come back to this in a moment. In the meantime, we'll take a look at how the flu virus mutates as a case study of sorts. Influenza is a simple virus belonging to one of three types, A, B, or C. It consists of seven or eight RNA segments enclosed within an envelope of proteins. Mutations and recombinations of RNA lead to viral evolution. There are two main types, antigenic drift and antigenic shift. Drift is when the virus evolves in gradual ways through mutations in genes that relate to the viral surface proteins. This causes the outer surface proteins to appear differently to a host previously infected with the ancestor strain. Antibodies can't effectively fight the newly mutated virus, and disease is the result. As the mutations accumulate over generations, the virus drifts away from the ancestor strain. This is the reason that new flu vaccines are developed every flu season. The folks behind the vaccines have to predict what changes are likely to occur and adjust from there. Antigenic shift is a process by which two or more different types of influenza A combine to form radically different strains. This may result in pandemic because humans will have few or no antibodies to block the infection. Shifts occur in two ways. The recombination of two or more different influenza A viruses in one host cell, or from jumping from one type of organism to another without undergoing major genetic change. An example of the recombination could be something like a pig virus and a human virus combining in a bird resulting in a totally different flu. If the virus jumps to a human without undergoing major genetic change and then mutates in a human host that it can easily spread, a pandemic might be the result. So now that we've discussed how viruses mutate and spread, we can come back to the coronavirus itself. COVID-19 is considered an RNA virus, meaning that it is not as stable as a DNA one. This could lead to mutation over time. However, the likelihood of mutations becoming more dangerous is low. 
Nathan D. Gruhau from the Yale Institute for Global Health urges people not to speculate on the effects of mutation. Misinformation can indeed be as costly as a disease. Plus, as we mentioned earlier, there would have to be a perfect storm of dangerous mutations resulting from an unlikely combination of genes in order to get a more dangerous coronavirus. COVID-19 isn't like the flu and doesn't seem to be shuffling its contents too often. In fact, according to Peter Thielen, a molecular geneticist studying strains of the virus, only between 4 and 10 genetic differences have been found between the strains in Wuhan and the US. As we see it now, COVID isn't mutating much and any vaccines developed should be good in the long term. And really, according to Gruhau, it's likely that by the time we figure out what any mutation is doing, the pandemic will have passed us by. So to summarize, the coronavirus, like all RNA viruses, is mutating, but the mutations aren't likely to cause any adverse effects. This doesn't mean that the virus isn't dangerous, but instead it's unlikely to get any more dangerous. The strategies given to us to prevent the spread and ill effects are still the best way to combat it, and that isn't going to change anytime soon. Physically distance yourself from others, self-isolate if you pose any risk, attempt to get tested if you're showing symptoms, and keep washing your hands. It's up to us to keep others safe, so please keep doing your part. Another big thank you to all the essential workers still going out into the world every day. Before I wrap up today's video, let's go over some of your more wondrous comments from what if you were in self-isolation forever. Ted the Godfather says, who says I'm not already talking to a volleyball? I mean, I'm not, but rude of you to assume. By the way, it's a football. I've named her Shannon. I don't know why. You named her? She didn't tell you her own name? Fox Jake asks, what if we end up with cabin fever and go all Jack Nicholson from The Shining? That would only happen if you were a recovering alcoholic trying to write a book while taking care of your psychic son. So like, maybe 1 in 10 people. Alex Garnica says, I'm an ambivert. So part of me is like, this isn't bad at all. While the other part is like, ugh, but I want to go to new places and stuff. I feel that on a deep, personal level. Watch Nate says, that's where the games come in. Yep, no better time to power through your backlog than the present. What are you folks playing these days? And Fortnite Grape 101 says, what is sup? Not too much. What is sup with you? And that's all the time we have for today. Before I float on, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more of the latest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.